I was going to start out by apologizing for not uploading anything last week, but I don't think anybody noticed. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Karen and today I am finally filming my April book haul. So originally this haul was supposed to be pretty small, but Indigo kept offering all these deals for double the points for people that have a membership card. And one of the books I originally ordered was on pre-order and took a few weeks to actually ship out. And by the time I finally got it to film this video, which was last week, they were offering another deal, which was $10 in points when you buy five books. I mean, that's a pretty good excuse to buy more books, right? So this is it, I'm done, and I'm finally ready to show you all of the books I bought for the month of April. Now I'm going to start by getting the box set I bought out of the way, and that is the Crank Trilogy by Ellen Hopkins. This book series actually follows a girl named Christina as well as later on her children and her struggles with meth and how that affects her life. This book series was incredibly popular years ago and still is today. It's also one of the most controversial book series in the contemporary YA genre and there's a lot of mixed reviews on it. I've met people who didn't really care for the unique writing style that Ellen Hopkins uses. I've met people who also really enjoyed it and this book series is actually my best friend Jill's favorite book series of all time and she's not much of a reader. So I figured it was probably about time that I finally read my best friend's favorite book series. Because when you're the bookworm in your friendship, there's no excuse for having not read something. I do have a very open mind to heavy topics as well as unique writing styles, so I'm actually really looking forward to finally sitting down and reading this whole series. And the next book I purchased is Belle's Library, which has been edited by Linda Wolverton. So as all of you probably know, Beauty and the Beast came out last month and I absolutely loved it like many other people did as well. And of course, Belle is everybody's favorite bookworm in the whole Disney world as well as in pop culture in general. This book is actually a compilation of a whole bunch of different quotes and books that are loved by Belle. So it's just full of a whole bunch of different quotes and illustrations as well as a whole list of books that Belle really likes and they are actually real books. It isn't like made up fairy tales or something that they did just for this book. It's all like Shakespeare and a whole bunch of other classic literature. At first I was avoiding this book because I thought it might be a bit childish but when I realized what it was I just had to have it. Especially if you're somebody that's really looking to get into more classic literature I think this is a good book to have. It's just the perfect book for all Disney fans as well as classic literature lovers out there. I'm really looking forward to having a quick read of this and displaying it on my bookshelf. The next book I got is Wildly Into the Dark, Typewriter Poems and the Rattlings of a Curious Mind by Tyler Knott Gregson. So if you've actually seen my makeup book tag, you'll know how much I love Tyler's work and how this book was previously released when I was filming that video. So I'm really excited that I finally have it. And this is basically a combination of a lot of his typewriter poems as well as the photography he likes to work into his poetry. So like his other books, I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to sit down and read this one because I absolutely love Tyler's poems. And the next book I bought just in time for the movie to come out next month and it is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. So this book is basically about a girl named Madeline who is allergic to pretty much everything so she cannot leave her house. The only people she really interacts with are her mother and her nurse. Then of course one day a boy named Ollie moves in next door and her life changes from there on out and she has this huge desire to actually see the world. I actually wasn't originally interested in this book but then when I saw the movie trailer I was like holy does that ever look good. So being the loyal book reader that I am, I figured I definitely have to read the book before seeing the movie. The next book I purchased should be familiar to anyone who lives and breathes YouTube and that is How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh. So this book is of course Lily's guide to finding success and living your best life possible and when I saw that she was releasing this book I just had to have it. Lily is so funny and is so inspirational and of course she's one of the most successful YouTubers out there so of course everybody wants to know how did you make this life for yourself? So I'm really looking forward to reading this book so I can learn just how to conquer life as she puts it. And the next book I finally purchased after staring at it in the bookstore for a year and that is Hot Dudes Reading. This of course is a collection 
of the posts that are found on the Hot Dudes Reading Instagram account. There's not really much else I can say to explain what it is. And for those of you that may take issue with a book and an Instagram account like this, let me just say, I've been single for six years, let me live. And I sincerely apologize if I pronounce the next name wrong, the name in the title, not the author. But the next book I got is Dear Ijewele, or A Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. So if you saw my introduction video from way back when in January, then you would know that last year I actually read Chimamanda's We Should All Be Feminist, which was her TED talk, of course and I absolutely loved it. It was a very quick read and it just really spoke to what feminism is and should be today. And this book actually began as a letter to one of Chimamanda's friends who had just had a baby and wanted to know how she should raise her children to be feminist. So since I loved Chimamanda's We Should All Be Feminist so much, I figured I should pick this one up as well. And I definitely think with the world we live in today, having a lot of books like this is actually a good thing since so many people seem to be confused about what feminism actually is today, it's good to have people demonstrating what it truly is. The next book I bought is super popular and super important right now, and that is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So this book is about a girl named Star who happens to witness the death of her friend at the hands of the police and all the events that ensue from there. So I think given with a lot of what's going on in the world today, a book like this is so important and the fact that it's been written for a contemporary YA audience is really good. Like this book isn't just a call to the fact that we need more diverse fiction. It's an attempt to try and explain what's going on in society right now and I'm really excited to actually sit down and read this because I think this is probably going to be such a powerful book and I'm excited to see what everybody else is talking about. So the next book I thought I'd pick up since the movie is actually coming out this week and that is The Circle by Dave Eggers. This is about a girl named May who gets her dream job at a company called The Circle which basically has surveillance and information all around the world. But of course nothing is as perfect as it seems and May discovers a lot of secrets about this organization. So like everything everything I had to pick up this book because the movie seems so so interesting but it does does seem to have a lot of real world application and given the way surveillance technology seems to be moving these days I thought that a book like this seemed really interesting so I'm really excited to sit down and read this one as well and it was on sale so why wouldn't you pick up a monster of a book like this for ten dollars right so the next book has kind of a confusing plot so I'm hoping I'll be able to explain it okay and that is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. So basically what supposedly happens in this book is that a famous actor actually dies on stage during a performance of King Lear. And once that happens, the world kind of sets off towards a more dystopian future. So the book follows Arthur, who is the actor, as well as many people connected to him and what basically is going on with their lives and what is happening to them in this new dystopia that they're living in. This book is written by a Canadian author, which is one of the reasons I felt I really wanted to read it. It is also super, super popular and it is a bestseller around the world. So I absolutely had to read this. I also know lots of people who have read it and said that it's absolutely amazing, so I can't wait to get to this one. And the next book that I have is called Sputnik's Children, and it's by Terry Favreau. And I think the synopsis on the cover actually does a better job than I could of explaining the plot, so I'm just going to read it straight to you. Cult comic book creator Debbie Reynolds Biondi has been writing the success of her Cold War era inspired superhero series Sputnik Chick girl with no past for more than 25 years. But with the comic losing fans and Debbie struggling to come up with new plot lines for her badass heroine, she decides to finally tell Sputnik Chick's origin story. Sputnik Chick is based on Debbie's own life in an alternate timeline called Atomic Mean Time. As a teenager growing up in Shipman's Corners, a Rust Belt town voted most likely to be nuked. She was recruited by a self-proclaimed time traveler to prevent an all-out nuclear war which would grotesquely alter humanity. In trying to save the world, Debbie risked obliterating everyone she'd ever loved, as well as her own past, in the process. Or so she believes. Debbie is addicted to lorazepam and dirty wet martinis, making her an unreliable narrator at best. A time-bending novel, Sputnik's Children explores what it was like to come of age in the atomic age. So the reason why I ended up picking up this book is because I actually got the chance to read the manuscript 
of it when I was completing my publishing program last summer. And we all had to write readers reports on it as an assignment. And we actually got to talk to the publisher at ECW Press, which published this book. I remember having a lot of thoughts about this book when I first read it. And I think a lot of my classmates did as well. And I just wanted to pick this up because I wanted to actually see the finished project and see if it changed in any way since like the original manuscripts that we all read. And I skimmed through it a little bit and I don't think much has changed, but I'm really looking forward to finding time to actually sit through and read it through and see what the final product looks like. The next book I purchased is Under Rose Tainted Skies by Louise Gornau. It's about a girl named Nora who actually suffers from both agoraphobia, which is the fear of the outside world, as well as OCD. She basically has spent her whole life inside of the house until one day a boy named Luke shows up and they form a French which ends up turning deeper. Now if you saw my introduction video as I mentioned earlier, I actually read a book last year called If I Fall If I Die which was about a boy who had never been outside of his home because his mother suffered from agoraphobia. Plus this book seems really similar to Everything Everything and on top of that all I'm actually someone who has struggled with OCD in the past. So this had a lot of things going for it that made me really want to read it and see what happens in this story. And the last book I bought is the special edition of Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. So this is about two 16 year olds named Eleanor and Park and their relationship over the course of a whole school year. So I've never actually read any of Rainbow Rowell's books yet. So I'm really excited that I finally picked this one up so I can see what all the hype is all about. And even though I don't know a lot about this plot, I have heard that Music plays a really big deal in this book and as a huge music lover I figured this would be a story I might absolutely love. So I'm really looking forward to getting to read this one. Alright guys, that is it for my April book haul. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment. And if you would like to see more videos from me, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Again, thank you for watching. As always, spread love and don't be a troll. Bye!